Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Triangulation is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Triangulation, episode 131, recorded December 11th, 2013. Alexis Ohanian. Triangulation is brought to you by Audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash triangulation. And by Hulu Plus. Hulu Plus lets you binge on thousands of hit shows anytime, anywhere on your TV, PC, smartphone, or tablet. Visit HuluPlus.com slash TRI to start your free two-week trial. That's HuluPlus.com slash TRI. Our guest is Alexis Ohaney, and welcome to Triangulation, <laughs> the show where we interview some of the most interesting people in the world, in the Internet, and there's nobody better than uh, Alexis. In fact, we've had, we're having him back. He's been on before, of course. Founder, creator of Reddit. Uh, Alexis has a new book, which I, I just love the idea of, without their permission, uh, the power of the Internet to change the world and isn't that what's what I think you even said this in our last conversation that that was what's what's so cool about the internet you don't have to ask for permission yes indeed uh, and it's kind of riffing off of you know there's this idea in tech about permissionless innovation right you can you can be uh, just a couple of random college students with laptops and start something that one day has more traffic than the New York Times uh, and you don't need to get anyone's permission to start like it also kind of riffs off of a great Grace Hopper quote about it's better to ask for, or it's rather it's better to ask forgiveness uh, than permission. And she was an OG uh, in technology with with just a, I think, an attitude that pervades a lot of the innovation culture that we see. That's really true. She heard ninety four would have been her ninety fourth birthday, I think, uh, this yes, week. Just they had recently. a great Google Doodle uh, mm -hmm. for Grace uh, Hopper. So this uh, this one is interesting because you do begin with the story of Reddit, a founding Reddit is is a little bit of a memoir. Well, you know, my editor, my editor made me do it. Basically, he said, you know, the, the stories in the book that are most interesting to me are the ones about, uh, like Debbie Guardino, who's who fundraised a half a million dollars on donors choose for a community in Joplin after the tornado destroyed it. Um, it's about Lester Chambers and Zach Weiner and Zach Anner, all these other people who are not themselves technologists, but who are using the internet to be awesome. But my editor's like, listen, dude, people know you as. <laughs> A Reddit co-founder. They want to hear about the Reddit story, so at least tell a little bit about it. So, uh, yeah, so it's, I suppose a way to build credibility too with an audience that may not know who this random person is with a weird-sounding name uh, talking about entrepreneurship. I have to tell you, Alexis. After our last mm -hmm. interview, I got mm -hmm. uh, my my bank checks. I got a pig on them as the logo. I was going through. Really? This. Yes. So you're saying? <laughs> I, wait, I, can I take credit for that for yes. affecting Lou Laporte's checks? I realize it's yes. very similar to the bread pig. And uh, and here he is. There's a bread pig, and this is the, the the you say that everything everything you've done, you've always had a mascot. This is the mascot for yeah. the book. Yeah, a pig with bread wings. Absurd. <laughs> I know. And and like I say there in the introduction, even if you don't like the book, uh, you can still give it to a child or a childlike adult who will use it as a coloring book for all the. <laughs> yeah, because there's a lot of illustrations all yeah. through it. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I just wanted to make sure people get something they want. There, see a little bread pig dressed is, as a hip monk, chip is, monk. Yeah. Is this your secret power? Doodles. Yeah. I, you know, I always tell people my secret power, my superpower is to, to fall asleep anywhere at any time. <laughs> That's uh, a good one. It is. It is a good one. Trust me on those long flights. But I guess so. Yeah, maybe it's not a secret anymore, Leo. You told everyone. The, his secret is out. You designed. <clears throat> we talked about this last time. The Hip Monk uh, logo, uh, and and here's another right. another red pig. Red pig. Yeah. yeah. Pigs on pigs on pigs. Yeah. <laughs> He's, uh, he can doodle anything as long as it's a pig. I love, I love, you know, that actually came about, Steve and I were coming up. That's, that's what angel investors look like. <laughs> Rich they put pigs. Top hat, top hat and a monocle. That's how, when we start investing, that's what we, that's what we look like. Yeah. You know, you're, everybody loves Alexis Ohanian. There's something about no. you. You're just, really? we were just, I was talking with Jeff Jarvis and Matthew Ingram just moments before they said I heard to say hi. Nice shout outs. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank and one of the things they said is that you're kind of a politician. I mean, this mayor of the Internet, I think Forbes was the one that dubbed you the mayor of the Internet. And I know for a yeah. while you were actually running. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wasn't like running, running. It takes a lot of four square check-ins to become mayor of the Internet. But, <laughs> but I did it. But you are. If anybody could be, you are. Because 
uh, you, you know, it's clear you're sincere and uh, you're authentic, but at the same time, you seem very genuinely friendly and warm and loving. And what I find very interesting is your commitment, and it comes through in this book too, um, mm -hmm. to helping people. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, yeah, I think those are all reasons why I would be a terrible politician. <laughs> Help yourself first, my my friend. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I, I I would love to see I would love to see politicians who are more relatable. Um, but uh, I don't know. I you know I had I, I had a couple of parents who instilled those values in me, and I've been I think I've been fortunate enough to have life experiences working like working some not fun jobs uh, growing up, and then getting the the perspective that I got, uh, you know, I left Reddit to go to Armenia for three months as a Kiva fellow in the motherland. Oh, nice. And, and you get that perspective. Uh, and when you realize that you work every day since college on stuff that you love and, and, and really enjoy the work that you do and are rewarded for it, like you, you feel a little, a little grateful. You have to, and, um, I don't want to squander it, right? I've got one opportunity. I, I like thinking lives remaining zero. Uh, because video games used to be hard, right? And you used to have finite lives. And life is a lot like that. Uh, you know, notwithstanding reincarnation or resurrection. No, of it always feels like a cheat to me that you can start over in a video game because in the yeah. real world, if you <laughs> jumped off a cliff, you wouldn't come back. <laughs> no. There's no second chance. No. Yeah. no. And, and, uh, and, you know, kids these days, games are so much easier now. They don't have those, they don't have that uh, same experience. But kids really, like. Today. like I know. They don't know. <laughs> don't get me started. Yeah. Here's a picture. <laughs> a pig, uh, of what it looks like when you sell your company to Condé Nast. I love the quote on this. Here, I'm going to have to read it. Yes, I'd like to upgrade my dad's season tickets. Oh, uh, front row, 50-yard line, please, the best you have. And it says, me, approximately three minutes after we sold Reddit. Isn't that... That, that is, that is the first thing I did. See, that yeah. is so cool. Is I he a know. Ravens fan? No skins. It's been it's been a hard season. Skins, uh, is tough. it's been really hard. You yeah. know, after last year, I thought RG three. This is exciting. Oh, yeah. They've got the future of quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a whole new world. Uh, our our quarterback too was kind of like that. And... Oh wait, you're uh, a Niners fan? Yeah. So uh, Kaepernick. Here's the thing, though, and that was oh man, I was expecting a competition with that you Niners did? game. I thought I thought maybe we would have a moment of a <laughs> shot, but. Uh, yeah, we are a train wreck. I think Niners are going to be in it. The team to beat, though, this year feels like it's Seattle. And I mean, you They're still scary. You, you guys stepped up, though. We I mean, beat them, but by it, you stepped up. But playoffs are where it counts. They're uh, scary. Seattle's scary. They yeah. are a scary team. A scary good team. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're are you a are you a football fan or is that oh, or are you just talking good hard? Here? Nah, dude, die hard. I got yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> He indoctrinated me, and you have to. The only way you're a Skins fan for 20 plus years is if you're <laughs> diehard, because you're either that or a masochist. <laughs> but I wish, I wish there were more of this in. Uh, I feel like in tech, I don't have, I can't really talk shop with a lot of folks. It's not a, uh, I don't know that it's. I, I, I've always loved sport, and I, I, it's funny you talked about how oh everyone, I guess at least a lot of people like me, um, or at least say nice things about me. Uh, if you saw me on Sunday at a game. Uh, and I make it home. I come home every. I mean, used to come home from San Francisco, and I lived there to fly home for home games, which were usually depressing. But <laughs> I would come home, and I become a different person when I'm, I'm there with my dad and my two best childhood friends. And one of these days, that video is going to go online, and everyone's going to never look at me the same way. <laughs> so, yeah. so you've been a Skins fan. Your dad took you to games as a kid. Yeah, well, we um, he was able to get season. T we was on the wait list for a little while. Um, we tried getting. He, we tried scalping tickets for the last game at RFK, but we had to, wow. we just sort of watched it from outside because they were too expensive. But we um, he got on the list while I was in college, That's and amazing. we had nosebleeds for I don't know three or four that years, really and amazing. it was it was great bonding. Like yeah, you know, it was uh, it was moments like that. And look, I'll be the first to admit, sport is so silly. Like you okay. know, you have these allegiances based on geography that is just so random and so whatever, but. Uh, it's it's three hours once a week where I can just get lost in something that feels bigger than me. I can feel surrounded by ninety thousand people, most of whom I feel close to. The others are, you know, Cowboys fans <laughs> who are in the wrong stadium. But it's it's special. I don't know. It's a sport. I know sport exactly is. what you mean. And there is an analogy to technology because people are the same way. I mean, Apple versus you know Microsoft versus mm -hmm. Apple or uh, Android versus iPhone or I mean mm -hmm. they, people make these silly allegiances in technology too Reddit versus Dig. Aha! Yes. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Now I know what side I'm on.
Yeah, no, it's it is it is it is silly. Um, and you know, even actually, uh, Mandela said it well. You know, the the quote that made the rounds after his uh, unfortunate passing. You know, about the power of sport. Obviously, the country South South Africa. He saw, was a huge sports fan. Saw that yeah. uh, uh, on a on a grand stage. Um, and I, you know, I don't right. even I don't even pay attention to soccer. But I tell you, when the World Cup gets going, like it's exciting. I, actually, I get intrigued. It's exciting. Yeah. Like it's it's uh, to see something on such a global level, man. Technology. Something bigger than yourself. Yeah. yeah. We all want to believe we're part of something bigger. Yeah. You know? So uh, l let's talk a little bit about uh, the book after all. you How many okay. cities? Oh, man. I don't even know. I know we're doing 165 stops, but we do multiple stops in a city. But we're doing 77 universities for sure. What? So that's at least 77-ish cities. Yeah. That's it's great. crazy talk. That's what, that's what my publisher said. And, you know, Tony Shea also... Uh, he's a pal, he's the same editor, and he did an amazing bus tour that really motivated me. And I was like, all right, Tony, you did you did a hell of a job, but I want to try to set the bar a little higher. He did the happiness bus. Are you doing a bus? Yeah. yeah. Do we have, we can, you can pull up on the Without Their Permission website. It's got the Reddit alien, the hitmunk, chipmunk on it. Uh, and it's all, it's got the, the black with the, the, the power symbols on it, uh, like the book. Yeah, that's, okay, so that's actually just a random bus that one of our organizers bought an ad on. If you go to tour that's, dates. By the way, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. There you go. are going back to your alma mater, the UVA, mm -hmm. and you're speaking. That must have felt pretty good. Oh, you know, it was it was great. And it was a packed house. And so, like, I don't know. It was the, the energy there was was really special. And I'm, I've been grateful, though. You know, we've seen this just amazing turnout. Um, it, it's These are all student-organized events. I'm just showing up there. They're doing all the real work. And it's 77 universities. You've got students, you know, hundreds of students coming out to hear. There it is. There's the bus. Uh, hear about entrepreneurship, and and this is not just MIT and Stanford. You know, these are schools all over the country, big and small, and uh, and it's exciting because look, this is not unique to just our zip codes. It's not unique to just the Bay and Brooklyn and Boston. Uh, this is happening everywhere, and and I want to make sure that all these students get to. I want them to hear the thing that I wish I had heard. When I was in school, what's that? Uh, and, and and it's basically get started. Please get started. Get used to failing. Get good at at, at having ideas and doing them. You can see that's my translation of entrepreneur. <laughs> um, that's been one of my favorites. Uh, it's it's a pretty good laugh line, and it is also like I, I think a, a key component. Right, you've got four years in college where hopefully you don't have many people dependent on you. You've got a safety net, you know, your room and board right. is covered. You literally just need a laptop and an internet connection to get started. And it's, you know, eight years ago, Steve and I graduated from UVA and the resources we had at that time were pretty limited. I mean, we, we, we launched Reddit with servers. We had to order off of Newegg and assemble and then put in a colo. Like today, it's a credit card. It's, it's an so Amazon. much easier. You got it's Amazon Web Services, yeah. everybody, Rackspace, everybody's doing it. Google Everyone's Compute. No. Yeah, and then and then just the the ability to learn, right? The live the first version of Reddit was in Lisp, which was a mistake for lots of reasons. But <laughs> just just the library support, all of the 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 resources, the stack exchanges of the world, so much all easier the resources, now. So much better, so much easier. Yeah. And uh, and then you go a step further. Look at all the platforms that have now been built that empower individuals who may not themselves be technical, right. but who have skills, right? Kickstarter, Etsy. Right. Um, if you, what do you want to learn? What do you want to learn? I, I am pretty sure there is something right now that is a, a world-class community or, or platform for you to learn it. And then to share what you've made, to, to show off what you've made, again, there's just there's so much going. So if you, if you just want to write, you know, force yourself to start a website and start forcing yourself to write some serialized fiction every week. And you're going to suck at first. You're probably not going to be great, but you're going to find people commenting on it who you've never met before. And when you find the, the for, no one forgets their first, right? The first time you find a total stranger on the internet who appreciates something you have created, again, whether it's a Kickstarter, whether it's a film you put on Vimeo or YouTube, or whether it's a blog, like it feels amazing. It's like a drug. And, and I hope that it encourages more and more people to get started having ideas and doing them because that's the skill. It's, it's whether I want to invest in you as a founder or whether I want to hire you as an employee. Like that's the skill I'm looking for and so many of us in this new economy are looking for. And it's not your GPA. It's, 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 what, you, it's what you're getting done. And, uh, and, and now is the time to get started on it. Well, I got to say, I mean, you don't need to do a 77 campus tour to sell a book. Mm -mm, obviously no. <laughs> so there must be another reason that you're you're doing this it sounds like you've got a message to take to young people it is i mean dude, it's it's absolutely inefficient and my, my publisher said too 
uh, you know, it's funny. I so I, I like I, in one ear, there's like there's there's folks like Tim Ferriss who are like, dude, you do, like the internet can win the day. You don't need to do all this. Um, and then I got my publisher who's just like, why are you going to college students? Like. This is not. They don't buy books. They steal them. <laughs> yeah, and and I will. And it's funny. I, I do mention this. I mean, because you know, routinely college students come up at, during the signing and they're like, you know, I'm really sorry. I, I just I, I, I don't have any money to buy your book. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, that's that's totally okay. I hear it's available online. You say that? That's all. Well, I'm just stating a fact. All I'm I am not encouraging anything. I am just saying. I, I've heard, I've heard things. I've heard things. Um, like, the, you might the, as well just hand out the BitTorrent link. <laughs> well, you know what? Un, unrelated to that, um, I've I've gotten plenty of messages from people asking for a Bitcoin account so they can send me over. Oh, that's uh, neat. Some just just because I mean this is this is what's cool, and I don't know why they would do that. I think I so, think I bet you it evens out, right? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Are you kidding me? Because and this is the thing, you know, piracy is a service problem. And I'm not talking about my book right now. I'm talking about in the general. abstract, of yeah. course. Piracy is a service problem. Um, Gabe, that's a Gabe Newell quote, of course, this, the brilliant CEO of Valve. Um, the, the, yes, the college student who's just worried about making sure that she can afford ramen for another couple of weeks, they weren't going to buy that thing anyway. anyway. But what they are going to do is, is spread the word and evangelize. And if they like what that some person has made, Right, they're going to more than make up for it over the lifetime that they are around talking to people about it, and and it's our job as entrepreneurs to make it easier to pay for the stuff than to pirate it. And if you look, Netflix, right, the CEOs out there talking about having the piracy of movies in Canada after Netflix goes there. Um, you've got Valve, which went into Russia against all odds, uh, a nation that's you know has an entire industry on piracy, and it's one of their best countries now because of Steam. Right. Like you get on the list, uh, Spotify going into countries uh, where all of a sudden now it's much easier to just pay for music or use their service than it is to pirate it. Like it's a service problem, CEOs. Like they, let the innovators innovate and, and hopefully the rest will either adapt or um, move along. It's pretty clear that you relish the title of entrepreneur. Is that is that the the word describe that you most like describe? I, it has a lot of syllables and it, it's, <laughs> and it's French <laughs> and it's French. I mean, I, there's, it's, it's, I, I want to, if nothing else, I would like that word to be it, like sort of taken off of its pedestal. I'd love to be, I like being called entrepreneurial or entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur, whatever. Um, but I would like more people to think of themselves as entrepreneurs. I think the internet does such a good job encouraging entrepreneurial behavior that, that's the mindset we all are capable of having. In fact, most of us have it. I mean, I can, I'll give you the perfect example. Um, my girlfriend, she is a, a microbiologist, right? She's getting her PhD. She's not, she would not consider herself an entrepreneur. Um, but a little while ago, she said, hey, I really want to start a podcast with some friends of mine talking about science in a way that's approachable and chill and fun. And, uh, and I'm like, great. Well, yeah, because I want to do that. that. Tell her to right? call me. Yeah. Well, and, oh. We'll help right. her do it. Well, Absolutely. Well, well, so she got she got her first few episodes up, and 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 how did it get started? I was like, well, look, I honestly don't know how to use GarageBand. I don't know how to use podcasting software, but there are resources there. You're smart. You'll figure it out. Transom.org. It's all dude, there. The, the drug once once the little drug gets in there, and she realizes, yeah. oh wow, last week I had no idea how to make a podcast, and we just made our first episode. Now it's just she's it's like to the moon. And so she's got, she's, then she's asked me about Illustrator and she's building, re like she's got a logo for it and she's got um, six episodes up. And now awesome. the Petri Dish podcast, shameless plug, is on iTunes. I didn't help her with any of this. She has far exceeded, like, and, and it's, it's that little bit that I get to see firsthand where I'm just like, yes, like there are so many people out there who have the potential to do this stuff. And thanks to the pioneers like you who have laid this framework and set this precedent, now we're seeing this really start to grow. And, and look, I just want better stuff, right? And so like all this stuff, the Tumblr, like I didn't do any of this for it. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's, it is a process. No one starts out with the, the Twit empire, right? That, that takes a lot of time. But, uh, you know, it's, it's just, it's cool to see and it's happening, you know, on a pretty personal level. And I'm, as I'm watching it, I'm just thinking like, yes, like more and more people need to be taking these kinds of initiatives. But not, I mean, if you're a microbiologist, you can do some entrepreneurial sidelines and maybe you could start a company. But there are plenty of jobs like microbiologists 
where it's not an entrepreneurial job. You're going to be a researcher. You're going to be a scientist. Those people are very important. They make massive contributions. Oh, yes. Not everything yes. lends itself to entrepreneurialism, or does it? Uh, uh, in, the, in the sense of there are entrepreneurs who start companies and, and do that, like, yes, in the traditional sense. Right. I, I think, and I would argue, you know, I see her, even, even in that field of science, um, there's a startup that came through YC called Micro Ryza. That's basically a Kickstarter for research projects. Oh. And, and that's a way for scientists like her or anyone, a researcher, to go to the internet, to go to crowdfunding, to get research funded that they can't get funded via their lab. It's like, let's say your lab is focusing on some battling breast cancer. You've got a hunch for something that might help. And it's gonna cost 20 grand in science equipment and supplies. But your boss is like, listen, I get my grant money for doing X, you can't do Y. So the researcher goes online and says, hey everyone, I wanna study Y, I think it's gonna help this. If you fund it, I'll publish all my findings to the world for free. That's so, really like, interesting, isn't so it? So these these researchers are not being entrepreneurs in the traditional sense, but they're being entrepreneurial, yeah. right? Yeah. And and that's that's so cool. Michael Reza, and I'm not an investor, but it is a YC company. But like, I'm genuinely excited about that because two years ago there were no options for researchers who had hustle, who just didn't have a way to get funding for those extra projects, and now there is, and hopefully there'll be many more. So, so clearly, when we're talking about without their permission, uh, crowdsourcing and crowdfunding becomes very important. Yes. Oh, yes. And and it's you know I am I'm the first to admit uh, this is very new territory. This is a this is a world we haven't yet. You know, we've the idea of crowdfunding and crowdsourcing is not new, right? There are Amish communities who build barns together. Uh, communities since early civilization have pooled money together to help people buy stuff. The, the procedure is not new, but the scale the internet provides is. And that's the thing that I'm, I, I'm very intrigued by. And you know, you can, there are plenty of examples of the sharing economy uh, that are you know, now billion dollar companies, but I'm really, really excited to see where it goes forward because you know, even, look, even in investing, right? What AngelList has done to try to democratize access to funding in the, in the more traditional sense, in a world that used to be full of getting sort of gatekeepers or, or people who had the capital uh, to be on board, you know, that's even getting democratized. So it's, again, this is not, it's really easy to start going like, hey, it's gonna solve all the problems. It's, it's, it is not this magic wand, uh, but undoubtedly more and more people are getting access to things that they wouldn't have before that allow them to be great. It's an exciting time. Yeah, no, it's a great, and that's why I'm so jealous of these college kids. And I tell them, I'm like, you guys, you know, in eight years ago, Steve and I graduated, and, and we've we've had a, a fair amount of success since then. But the giants on whose shoulders you all now stand in school are so much greater than what we had. Your next eight years have the potential for so much more, and and yeah, it makes me jealous. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but I tell them I, I'm doing this because I want to take all the credit for their success. We're talking to the mayor of the internet, Alexis Ohanian, the founder of Reddit <laughs> and Hip Monk and Bread Pig, and his new book is called Without Their Permission. And what's nice, and I, you know, I, I thank your editor who said you got to do a little memoir because it is a great memoir. And in here you talk about the first time you heard about Dig, and then the video you saw of Kevin Rose blowing his nose on a Reddit T-shirt, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and you, it, but you also talk about selling Reddit. You talk about um, and then, and then it also goes on to talk about the future and 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 all the things we've just been talking about. It's really, actually, it's quite a good read. I got to say, it's Yay. it's really oh, entertaining. And I, you know, I I I've been there for a lot of this ringside seats. Uh, but I have to say, a lot of stuff in here that I never heard about. Um, it's called without their permission. Hashette published it. Nate Silver says it's rare that a 30 year old has a memoir worth writing, let alone worth reading. But Alexis Ohanian's Without Their Permission is an exception, I have to say. It, I agree 100%. We'll be back with more of Alexis Ohanian in just a moment. But our show today brought to you by Audible.com. I mentioned his book is available on Audible.com. So I think it would be rude of me not to make it our pick of the week. What is Audible? It's the world's best audio bookstore. 150,000 titles. Every topic from thrillers, science fiction, biography, history, kids books, young adult books. In fact, it's a great way to get a kid into reading. I know sometimes people say, no, no, I want them to read physical uh, books. But you know, studies have shown that when you have a book and you're, and you're reading along and you're listening as you read, you actually become a reader faster. It's a really great way to get kids uh, reading books by listening to them at audible.com. Uh, I'm a big fan and I know you will be too. That's why we've arranged a one 
month free trial. You'll be signing up for the gold account. That's the book a month account. But your first month is free. Your first book is free. Cancel any time in the first 30 days. Pay nothing. You can keep the book. Alexis Ohanian's book is there, and I'd recommend it without their permission. In fact, let's, let me go to it, and uh, we'll just see what it sounds like, because Alexis read it himself with his high school buddy. And uh, there's the book. This is free if you go to audiblepodcast.com slash triangulation. Let's For listen. centuries, invention was limited to those who had access to the means of production and access to labor. Today, you can simply create and present your ideas online. You're good. Right. Alexis is good. He sounds like a pro. Anyway, lots of great stuff. The best readers in the world. Sometimes the author, sometimes just uh, great actors from Broadway and elsewhere. Uh, audiblepodcast.com slash triangulation. Try it today. Your free book could be uh, waiting for you right now. Alexis Ohaney and our guest, Triangulation, the show. We're talking about his new book, Without Their Permission. Maybe you saw him on Colbert. How was, how was that? Was that exciting, being on Colbert? Oh, it was, yeah, that was bucket list material. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, how exciting I that is. I was so incredibly nervous. And, you know, I... I felt, oh God, I was gutted when uh, he called me out for not knowing that he was on The Daily Show <sighs> before John. I, in my defense, and this is this was just my fault for being an idiot. Um, I was, I think, thirteen. But exactly, uh, how would you know that? I, I really should have. I, I should. I was. You have to understand. Like a lot of people, um, I think I, I get a fair amount of feedback from people who see me doing either interviews or public speaking. And they're like, oh, man, what's your secret, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh, it's just, it's like tons of practice. That's the, the short <laughs> of it. But no amount of practice could have prepared me for the nerves and the terror oh, no. of being on Stephen Colbert. Oh, yeah. I, it's just, it's the fanboy and the terror and the, this is happening right now on live TV. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I just, I haven't watched it since. And uh, and and my loved ones were all in the green room, and they 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 were very happy for me oh, when you I did got great. off stage. Yeah, you so did either, great. Either they were just grateful that it was like, oh, he's off stage, or uh, or they were just uh, ready for. Hugs. You know what's oh. interesting is even in this day and age where the geek is celebrated, and I think you know uh, everybody's a, you, when you when you tune in a major network television show, and there is one of us is Alexis Alexis Ohanian on there, it, it's like. All of us are on Colbert. It's like a, it's still an affirmation of being a geek, and it's, so it's it's still even in this day and age. Like, hey, one of us is on there. That's great. Well, I, if I, I just hope I didn't. You let didn't embarrass the geek us. Down. Okay, good. <laughs> By the way, uh, I should mention that the Whoa. book is on Audible, and you narrated it. How was that? Was it uh, fun? It was. It was very cool. Actually, Hard the work. audio engineer went to my high school, uh, Howard Lyons. Yeah, oh. Howard High School in uh, Columbia, Maryland. Yeah, so so we we just we basically spent all the time. It's not recorded, of course, just reminiscing about growing up in suburban Maryland. Uh, but it was a lot of fun to do. I even I got to do a few voices. Uh, the one the one my favorite part was at the very end. I had to read the boilerplate copyright information. Yes. And, <laughs> and I don't know which take they actually used, but every single one of them I read as as dryly and and. <laughs> Like depressingly as I could, just which holds the copyright there too, yeah. and all like, permissions yeah. and worldly goods are yours. Yeah, oh my I god, yeah, was, that's funny. You have to do that too, that part too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's the? When, when did you start little, growing the beard? The start of the tour. This is my. It's like my Red Sox. I'm not a baseball fan, but I. This is to. This is to like the, my bestseller beard. Fear I the beard. I want to keep this thing going until the tour ends. <laughs> so this is two months, and I have until. March and I I haven't I didn't quite get the well I was gonna say I didn't quite get the permission of my girlfriend she she was she she was on board it's starting it's there aren't small animals living in here yet mm. but uh I don't know if she's ever gonna is she gonna make you shave it off when you're done I uh, I probably yeah if this is what it's at two months in in three more months it's gonna be if your little, girlfriend has a man. podcast called the petri dish and you're growing yeah. a beard yeah I think oh, she geez. knows better than you what's in there. <laughs> yeah, I've really got to start. <laughs> I got to start taking better care of this thing. Are Brooklyn entrepreneurs different than San Francisco entrepreneurs? Yeah. Are you going to be diplomatic? People... You're going to be diplomatic, no, aren't you? No, in as much as in as much as people from Brooklyn are different from people in San Very Francisco. Very different. Very I, different. I but those are both our... hotbeds of creativity, 
Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like the Brooklyn entrepreneur, and I'll say this as a, as a San Francisco guy, mm-hmm. you know, here I am on, in Northern California, I'll say, I'd say the Brooklyn folks are friendlier, that the San Francisco folks are a little cutthroat. Yes, I like it. Because we usually get a reputation as New Yorkers of being mean and surly. They're nicer um, in Brooklyn. I, I would agree. I think we have, I think our ideas are better. I think our everything is better. No, I I think, I, I, okay, I'll say the big the biggest advantage to me for living, or the biggest advantage for me to living here is that every day I'm in a city of 8 million people. And when I get on the subway, uh, I know that most of them do not care about my startup. Right. Like I, I don't go out and overhear startup pitches unless I'm in a couple of particular geographies. That's in the all city. you hear in San Francisco. Yes. And and that and, and that can be said about a lot of other startup communities. Um, but what I like about New York and I guess Brooklyn in particular is just the, the that there is such a range of people. Like the kind of people the city attracts. These are people who are willing to give up things like quality of life uh, yeah <laughs> right they don't they don't necessarily want to go take a stroll in the mm. mountains or go hiking or kayaking like these are people who know they're taking years off of their yeah. life by living here yeah but and, and for better or for worse I think I think the scene stir problem is worse here in New York oh that's interesting be, because it is a city that attracts I mean it, it attracts hustlers for better or for worse right um, it, it, because of I think there is a kind of the, I guess that's the, the gift and the curse that there is a kind of um I don't know, pure geekery in San Francisco. I don't know. How to, I mean, it's it feels. I don't know. It, it the, the the advantage to New York having a burgeoning tech sector is that it's now competing with the other major sectors of like finance, right? Uh, which is right. Uh, Meatpacking, I mean, yeah. Garments. It's just a different scene. It's, <laughs> it's all it there. Is, it is a very different scene. Um, but uh, you know, I like getting kids off the street. That's important. Yeah. Get them, get is them that why you're an entrepreneur? Get the kids off the street. Startups. Fresh air off. fund. Get, I want to send them to summer camp in the Catskills. That's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. Do you, what's harder, getting a great idea or executing? Oh, executing. I, and it's, and it's funny because as the, as the non-technical guy, I always end up getting asked, hey, I've got this great idea. Where do I find an IT person? And I'm just like, oh. You just want to face palm. As soon as I hear IT person or something, <laughs> it's like, uh-huh. I get that all the time on the radio show. I have the best idea ever. And if I could yeah. just find a person to program it, yeah. I'm and, going and, to the moon. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's tough because, like, the subtitle of the book is how the 21st century will be made, not managed. The value of, like, the value, the greatest skill of this century is to be a maker, to be a builder, to be a creator because you have all the power. Um, you know, if you, you used to be, you used to be powerful because you were the one who managed the resources. You had the wealth or the connections to be able to open the factory or to open the thing that changed the world. Today, it really like it's it's the skills, it's the ability to do stuff, and it puts it puts makers in a really fortunate position. It makes those of us who just are ideas people realize just how worthless those things are, and uh, and that's why I'm just pushing people go to Code Academy. You know, this is the week of code right now. Yeah, the hour of code. That's Rails right. For zombies. Yeah. The hour. My yes. kid, my kid, 18 years old, for years I've been saying, learn about computers, finally texted me, I'm going to do the hour of code. Right said, on. My son? That made me happy. But you know what I said? Go to codeacademy.com and you can really learn. I mean, it isn't hard to learn. Should everybody learn how to code? I, I think everyone should. Well, okay. There's a much bigger like educational question here. But yes, I, I would... I would love for everyone to at least be exposed to it. Obviously, we've got a lot of educational sort of problems right now. Um, but like, even the country of Estonia is talking. This is a country, of course, whose developers built Skype, which we're yeah. Not using don't say even like, Estonia because Estonia I know. is like well, totally yeah. focused on technology. Yes. The, Tallinn, right. the cat is. I mean, this is a big technology company. You country, you would never know it. Yeah. And they, and I shouldn't, yeah, you're right. I mean that not as a slight to Estonia. No, fellow, Even Estonia, know, especially Estonia. Yeah, especially Estonia. <laughs> and, and, and for them to be talking about putting CS education in, I guess, first grade through 12th yeah, grade, they're talking why. about every Estonia. Like, that's right on. That's a um, huge and, opportunity for a country that was yeah. under the shadow of the Soviet Union to create a, an economy for itself out of whole cloth, out of nothing. Yes. Yes. And it's such an amazing story because, and I've, I've, I've uh, gone on the Googles for this. Um, the year Skype, which, like I said, you know, is largely it was built by Estonian developers, was acquired 
uh, it was worth roughly a tenth the entire GDP of Estonia. <laughs> so, like to put it in perspective, they've realized very quickly the value of software and what that can yeah. do, and and they're doubling down on it. And this, and like you said, this was a country under the heel of communism. You know, I you know I, I make it back to uh, Armenia and I tell my friends there, like it's it's a similar situation where right. here's a country that was under the heel that's still trying to figure things out, and anything we can do to invest in this kind of education and this kind of infrastructure will pay big dividends because I, like who's to say the next Skype isn't coming I mean it, right uh, chances are it's probably gonna come out of Estonia again right uh, at this rate and <laughs> and look dude this is this worries me as an American because how many other industries in the world does America still dominate in right we the world is using Facebook and Twitter and Google and 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 there aren't a lot of industries where, and obviously there are exceptions in different markets, but like truly global software powerhouses are largely American. Obviously, a lot of them founded by immigrants, but they're American companies. Um, I want this. I want us to stay that competitive. Yet the barriers to entry fall every day, you know. And 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 it's that's why it's so important for us to keep this advantage we have and make sure internet access is a priority and make sure the education is there and make sure we're giving visas to the job creators who want to come here because. Uh, there aren't a lot of industries where I think we will have this kind of dominance and we need to maintain it uh, as best we can. You don't think though, I mean, uh, thinking more globally that the idea of a national boundary isn't going to, I mean, really what this is about is transforming the globe. Isn't yes. It? Yeah. I mean, the, the, when I'm, uh, you know, on a, Man, and this is where things get really interesting, right? Especially, I don't want to, I don't, I don't know if you, how much you guys have talked about Bitcoin yet. Uh, I see you're taking bitcoins on your website, and we do I too. Am. I, I am. have seven. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Sir. Steve Gibson to set up a bitcoin mining thing years ago when when he just was kind of well. I wonder what this is. Got fifty bitcoins like that. The guy's sitting on fifty grand. Well played, sir. Very well nice. Played. Very nice. If you could do it. Yeah. And, and that, like, I, I think. What does bitcoin mean to you? Why is this important? You know, it is. I am, and I'm, I will say this. I am. I am. Curiously optimistic about it. Uh, I'm sorry, cautiously optimistic about it. Um, I and I've been invested in a couple of Bitcoin-related companies. Have you? I think you yeah, don't think um, Bitcoin may be just a pyramid scheme by uh, Satoshi Nakamoto and his cohort because they're billionaires, uh, Bitcoin yeah, billionaires. I mean, the that is this is all to be seen. I right. I think what is so interesting. This is obviously not the first digital currency that's been attempted. But it seems to be one of the smartest yes, and, and certainly smart. one of the most viable in terms of like how far it's gotten in terms of mainstream adoption. And, and that's it at the end of the day, right? If enough people believe in it, um, it, it has value. And I think just technologically, I think where I'm most intrigued by it, to, to go back to your sort of borderless world, you know, it's silly what banks charge me to move money from yeah. one country to another. That's yeah. ones and zeros. Even if it even if it still maintains its place as a sort of unit of transfer, I don't. I'm not an economist. I don't know what the thing is, but like as a thing that that painlessly and efficiently gets currency from one place to another, and you know it, that alone is interesting and extremely valuable. Um, but we'll see. I don't know. I you know every other every subway that adds another Bitcoin register is is sort of helping the cause. Um, but I'm, I'm and, definitely on the optimistic side. In the long run, it probably doesn't really matter if it's a pyramid scheme So and Nakamoto becomes a billionaire. If it works and it transforms uh, finance mm -hmm. and, and, and all of that, we still get the benefit of it. So what? Big deal. We do, you don't have to necessarily worry about whether uh, why it was created as long as it, it works. The, the twist at the end of this movie, Leo, is that we find out that it's you. <laughs> <laughs> Alexis Oanian is our guest. We're going to take a break right now. We'll be back with more. Our show today is brought to you by Hulu Plus. Now that I can get excited about. Hulu Plus is, of course, a great way to binge on your favorite TV shows, thousands of hit shows, anytime, anywhere, on your TV, on your PC, on your smartphone, on your tablet. I just got Hulu Plus on my Chromecast. I'm so excited. Chromecast. You plug it into your TV, 35 bucks, and now... You can see your favorite TV shows, uh, movies, anywhere your TV is. You can watch Jimmy Kimmel Live. You can watch Shark Tank. I love Family Guy. Is Brian going to come back? Let's find out. You can watch it on Hulu Plus. Saturday Night Live, I can never stay up late enough. <laughs> There's Family Guy. So I just watch uh, the best of 
on Hulu Plus. You can watch every episode of shows like Lost, Doctor Who, Community, Star Trek. Their Hulu Plus exclusives, originals like Behind the Mask, their new docu-series that takes you inside the world of sports mascots. I love that. Also, a huge collection of ad-free movies and kids' content. And best of all, it's only $7.99 a month. Catch up on current shows, binge on old favorites, or catch a great movie. You stream as many shows as you want, whenever you want, Eight bucks a month, that's such a good deal. But right now you can get two weeks free. If you've never tried it before, this is the best way to do it at HuluPlus.com slash TRI. HuluPlus.com slash TRI for two weeks free of Hulu Plus. Alexis Ohanian is here. He's the founder of Red. When I read your CV, there's so many things he has done. It is really uh, quite amazing. The founder of Reddit uh, out of college he uh, then went on and started Hipmunk, which is still a great travel site. Bread Pig is uh, Newman's Own for Nerds, as he describes it. Uh, he has just published a new book called Without Their Permission. And I'm going to read the subtitle, How the 21st Century Will Be Made, Not Managed. So obviously he's an anarchist. He's also the ambassador to the East for Y Combinator. I think that's a great title. Yeah, PG is good with things like that. They had, uh, I came back from came back from Armenia, went out to lunch with Paul and Jessica, and they were like, "Hey, we'd love for you to, you know, be a partner at Y Combinator." And I said, "That is amazing! Like, thank you. I would. You guys have done so much for me." Well, you, he ins did he not ago. inspire you to start? As I remember, he inspired you to start yeah. Reddit, right? Yeah. No, we had we had my mobile menu. It was mmm. What's the short name for it? And <laughs> that was pizza we were, by fax. Uh, I know. We were going to let people order food from their cell phone. <laughs> this talked, was 04. We talked to uh, Steve about that. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Yeah, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. We, you know, I'm, I'm now an investor in Order Ahead, which is the exact same idea. But we have the internet executed now. executed much better. Yeah. Yes. Just timing, right? And that's, you know, we were lucky, though, because Steve and I would have probably been working on that for a little while back in Charlottesville, Virginia, if it hadn't been for Paul and Jessica and Robert and Trevor, the founders of YC, rejecting us. Uh, because oh, I didn't know they rejected you. Yeah, we applied with my mobile menu. They rejected us. We got drunk uh, that night. It was up at Harvard. And we were actually out drinking with a bunch of um, friends and friends of friends. We met some Harvard guys who were kind of bragging to us about having just gotten jobs at Lehman Brothers. Oh, and, God. And they, how did that turn out? Oh. Uh, <laughs> but, they, <laughs> but they were they, they were this. And, and I, my, vis, my reaction, uh, both out of like just – drunkenness and I guess insecurity was to tell them, oh yeah, well we just got into this thing called Y Combinator and Ooh. we have this company called mm, and it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> and and I felt so terrible lying to them. So I, I drank a lot more. Yeah. I just tried to forget it all. And the next morning, Paul calls up and he, he just says, uh, we're on the train back to Virginia and he's like, hey, we still don't like your idea. Okay, all right. But we like you guys. Oh, and if that's you and good. Steve are willing to change your idea. That's good. And come up with anything new in a browser. Don't build anything on the mobile. Just build something in a browser that solves your problem every day. Something that you have uh, will let you in. So we go back to Boston. We sit with him for an hour and we just just brainstorm. Uh, and Steve had been using Slashdot uh, for for quite some time, and I was just using Tabs, this brand new invention in browsers to read a bunch of news and. And by the end of the conversation, Paul was, seemed to be satisfied with this idea that wow. we had to just build a, what was new and interesting online, kind of user-generated thing. And uh, and he goes, that's it. You guys will build the front page of the internet. Wow. And we're just like, really? Really? Like, you're going to give us money to do this? Like, all right, sucker. And, and when and they make the movie, Justin Timberlake will pay, play Paul so. Graham. <laughs> no, maybe <laughs> tell you. <laughs> no, I want, no, I, no, no, I want Justin Timberlake to play Paul. Okay. Um, Anth Anthony Michael Hall or Ooh. Ryan Gosling will play Steve. Oh, that's good. That's and good. And I get, I get Christopher Walken. Oh, you've, you've clearly put some thought into this. Yeah, no, we, oh, as soon as Social Network came out, I was like, who do I want to play Steve? You know Hall? that's the next Social Network. And if Aaron Sorkin isn't writing this movie, now he ought to get on this, on the shtick. I'm going to go, me. I'm going to go talk Call to Dana me. Brunetti. The Trigger yeah. Street folks, this is the next social network. Forget that Zuckerberg man guy. Forget him. It's Ohanian all the way and Huffman. That's what I'm talking about. Let's make this happen, Leo. You can please be my agent. Please. I love that scene. The scene where he where you talk to the guys. And at the time, it seemed like they were kings of the world. We're going to Lehman Brothers. And yeah. you're on the your heart's in the ground because your startup was rejected by Paul Graham. 
Yeah. What a that is a that is a great movie scene, and then they're out in the street, and you are Reddit. I I mean I you know I, I don't want to get too Schadenfreude about it, but I did smile a little. <laughs> and by the way, the chat room yeah. says Ben Affleck playing you much much better. Oh casting. oh, it's because the beard. It's Actually, the beard. you know who I get? Josh Radner. If I'm clean shaven, everyone is Josh Radnering me. So oh. much so that on the Twitters, Josh Radner actually was called out and and conceded. He was like, "Yeah, I guess this guy kind of looks like me." So I was like, "Yes." Yeah, you know what? This sh they got to get clean shaven. <laughs> I think yeah, they might be right, but you know, we Google don't Mountain cast Man. by looks alone. Google Mountain Man Josh Radner. As and long as it's not Ashton Kutcher, I think you're okay. I no, he's he's too he's too good looking. That guy, he's got. <laughs> No, You're that's such the, a you know, diplomat. The thing, Jobs. No, really. No, I mean he. You know, I actually haven't seen Jobs. I've seen the trailer, but he does such a good job looking like him. It really wasn't good. No, terrible. I was a little bummed because in the trailer, Waz, like they they Hollywood dorkified Waz. Oh, terrible! Like, and Waz, they made and they made Steve explain to Waz why the computer was a good thing, which I think mm -hmm. is not quite right. Not accurate. Yeah. yeah, I can't imagine Hollywood screwing up anything when it comes to technology. How could that be? In fact, yeah. come to think of it, forget the movie. Yeah, you've made go. movies. You made movies. Maybe you should make the movie. Very. I well, that was. I mean, actually, there's a the team at Nibblebot actually directed that documentary. Um, I don't know. I uh, I wouldn't want not, that on my card. The team at Nibblebot. No, Nimble. nimble. Oh, Nimble. Okay. <laughs> I like Nibblebot though. Yeah. No, Nimble. Nimble. Forget Bot. Yum. Nim Nibblebot. I'll give it to you for free. Um, the book. In the book, you talk about your fight against Sopa and Pippa. Um, uh, I think that your work for Internet Freedom, the Internet uh, uh, 2012 campaign bus tour, all the things you've done, that's where the documentary is about, by the way, Silicon yeah. Prairie. Um, and DRM Free, of course. Do you have, you must have, do, have you always had this kind of energy? I mean, the, all the, you're a very busy guy. Yeah, it's, I'll tell you, cocaine does amazing it's amazing, things. amazing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm actually, uh, what was that? I should stop making jokes about doing cocaine. You're drug right, free. Is, you are drug free. I want to say that. Uh, sort of ish. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I tried. I mean, you know, if it's a natural. You're naturally you guys, energetic. Oh, you guys are legal. Yeah, weed is legal. Do man. you uh, do you uh, drink a lot of coffee? A lot of coffee. Okay. I'd say two or three cups a day. I try to. I'm trying to bring it down. Okay. Um, but uh, no, you know what? I I I had my 30th birthday uh, back in April, and I remember thinking distinctly. I was like, I feel hungrier at 30. That's awesome. Than I did at 20, and That's and I awesome. hope it keeps up. It um, won't. I can promise you. Oh, damn it! I'm tired. Right. <laughs> I still feel I, most mentally. I still feel like twelve. Yeah, uh, you'll feel that way for the rest I'm, of your life. But it doesn't mean. Geez, <laughs> man, I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like, dude. And I and I've got these old photos of me, uh, like in college. And and as soon as we started Reddit, and I'm looking at me and I'm just like, who the hell is that guy? Like, that, that <laughs> child. And then Steve looks the exact same because he's a vampire. Yeah, he hasn't changed. I. Uh, yeah. No, so, are, uh, when you hit thirty, were you bummed that you'll never again be on the thirty under thirty list? <laughs> <laughs> no, and I'm thrilled now because I get to recommend friends of mine oh. who are under thirty who are doing amazing things. Um, but you know, there's always the, 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 the. I'm sure. I'm sure some other website is going to come up with like the thirty-five under thirty-five if it means a few more page views. Um, no, I mean it's. Uh, it, it was certainly cool, but uh, I'm, I'm okay with it. Tell me about Small Empires, Jerem's asking. Ooh, about that. let me tell you about Small Empires. Yeah. I, uh, um, I pitched the show to TV networks for like two years. I was like, I want to do a show that's part Dirty Jobs and part Inside the Actor Studio for startups oh, that I, I host. It. Oh, I love And I want to demystify it. I want to show, I want to make a show that my sisters can watch to finally understand what I do for a living right. and not just what it does for founders and employees at startups, but also for users and show like, here's a couple that met on OkCupid and, and here is what OkCupid has done and here are the people who work at OkCupid and wow, this tech sector is full of all kinds of interesting people who love their jobs and, and full of interesting users who are you know making their lives better through technology. So it's, we did a full season, it was a huge success, I'm thrilled to say. We have an amazing, my team at The Verge is amazeballs. And they did all the work. I just show up as a host. I crack a few jokes, and then I peace out. Um, they really did all the amazing stuff. And season two is coming, uh, I think, mm, probably by May of next year. And you can see, I mean, it's the the the, the shots, the camera, all the CG, all the air. It's just it's amaze balls. And uh, I don't know. I I really wanted something that would show how just 
how broad the sector is and, and how it's affecting people so that even someone who's never even considered starting a startup can now consider working at one or consider using one. And OkCupid's okay, an easy one because they've done obviously such an amazing job uh, building this small empire. But we really run, we ran the gamut with companies that are still on their way up, um, companies that are affecting a variety of industries, and uh, we're taking it we're taking it abroad uh, next oh, good. year. Oh, some, good. Some traveling. This was New York was because one, I'm lazy, and two, because oh, yeah, I really want to, yeah, you so know, lazy. do everything I can for the New York tech scene. <laughs> so lazy, such a lazy person. Get no, I just want to try to work out in you lazy. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been to the web? I have not been to the web. You gotta go Paris. next year. I'll tell Loic to invite you because that's about European entrepreneurship. That's all it's about, and it's a wonderful yeah. conference going on right now in Paris, freezing cold. Oh, I didn't get. I don't get it. I don't get invited to stuff. I feel like I. I uh, Loic uh, probably I'm, just I'm thought you'd turn him down. You, I will. No. You will get no, invited just, next year. I promise you. Okay. Thank you. If you want to go. Yeah, no, I'd love to go back. I love Paris. Any excuse Ooh. to go to Paris is a good one. Tell your girlfriend she'll make you go. Ah, yeah, no, that's that's dangerous. No, I know. Because, yeah, no, I no, know. no, that's it's very romantic. <sighs> yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. Leo, you're going to have to help me, though. I can't just... You can, no, know, you've got just... things to do, places to be. You can't settle down. Well, I mean, I still, like, I, I... Oh, man, she's going to be watching this, too, and now I've got to have to... Now I'm not going to be able to surprise her when we go to Paris, Leo. That's because... right. <laughs> Alexis and I have already been ring shopping. I just want you to know. <laughs> we need to get it. It needs to be 3D printed or something. It can't. I'm, I'm so need. sick of the diamond industry. No, We're NFC, dude. It has to have NFC, NFC oh. in the ring, right? Yes, yes. so I can that you use it pay, for all kinds of pay things. things. Pay for things. Pay for stuff. <laughs> Alexis, it's, I, you know, it's so fresh and exciting to talk to you. You inspire. Uh, you amuse. And the book is like that, too. It's full of energy, full of funny stories. And uh, by the way, Marissa Meyer got engaged at LeWeb. Uh, just, really? Mm, I'd be in good company then, wouldn't I? would be in very good company. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gives you a year to prepare. Jeez. The book wow. is, oh, you're going to make so much money on this book, you know, you can get her a whole full carat diamond. The book is called... <laughs> no, no diamonds. we got to get no her di diamonds, Full right? carat NFC. Lab, Without... Lab-grown <laughs> lab diamonds are cool. Okay. Like, yes, we don't want no blood diamonds. Yeah, mm -mm. no, no, no. Like, no. just like Kanye and Jay-Z said, man. That's right. Blood diamonds are bullshit. Lab-grown, maybe. Hey, how about yeah, something lab made out of melted Bitcoin? <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done. <laughs> oh, man. That is a ring she will very much be. I thank with. Mr. Mike for that. I my, The chat room is my writers, by the way. Get a chat room. They write really well. It's like uh, having right, a writer's yeah. room there at all times. Oh, all right. Mm -hmm. Good to know. My suggestion. Hey, I know you're going to dinner. Thank your friends for letting me keep you for a little bit. The book is Without Their Permission, How the 21st Century Will Be Made, Not Managed, a must read. Uh, but and if, you ever, and if you get a chance, I know Alexis is not done yet with his tour. Mm -hmm. If you get a chance, uh, go see him because it's in a very inspiring. Somebody who saw you just uh, last night at uh, Amherst and said it right was on. amazing. It was awesome. So oh, great. Well, we had a T-shirt cannon. So, you know, a lot of these universities never get a T-shirt cannon uh, in in a really usually formal setting. So I also do a good Bane impression, uh, which I've been working Let's on. Let's hear your Bane. Story. I'm not. I'm just giving it away. I got I'm, it. That's I'm a startup entrepreneur. <laughs> That's not bad, Leo. <laughs> Yours. Yours. <Not> bad. <laughs> Doesn't matter what people think about your Bane impression. Uh, I don't know how that. I don't know how that comes. Okay, through. now when we started the That's show, it, Alexis yeah. was going to do the show in his bathroom. In my bathroom. Yeah. Can you take it? Oh, you're wired now. Yeah. I want you because I said okay, you can do it in your bathroom, but you have to flush at the end of the show. I know. I was wearing pants. Let's just be clear. <laughs> but I, I had to retreat to a section of, like to a, a, the the one part of my apartment. Right? Pants He's, and his swacket. Alone. Yeah. Very stylish. Very formal. Very formal. Have a wonderful dinner. Alexis, always a pleasure. Thank you, Leo. Please Thank come you. out and visit us anytime you want. I just think you're the greatest. You'll be Careful in. Uh, Jeff says you're going to Northeastern, which is Jeff's school uh, in January. He's planning Shh. on being there. Nice. It'll be a beautiful time to be in Boston. <gasps> January. January in Boston. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the tour dates are all on the website without their permission.com. And so you can see where he's going to be. And he has many. Miles to go before he sleeps. Uh, this is just the bit. What a you're crazy. You're crazy, man. We gotta we gotta check a few of those off. Uh, no. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's it. some of them behind, but you're going all the way through February. That's amazing. Yeah. 
Rutgers, McGill, Arizona State, Rice, Carnegie Mellon, UMass, University of Iowa, University of Chicago, University of Miami. You're just going all over the place. That's incredible. And I'm telling you, when you're hanging around all these college students, it's so easy to get fired up. One, because they love buying shots. And two, <laughs> because they are like, ah, I don't know, it's, it's, it's cool. Like, they're working on stuff. They're like, I'm meeting freshmen who are like, can you take a look at my Android app? And yeah. I'm just like, God, I am so jealous of you. You've been you've been running code for the last decade. Oh, man. You know? Mobile wasn't really around when you were doing Reddit. I mean, that really wasn't a thing yet, was it? Oh, we had that when we when we launched the reason we didn't do mm, right was because the smartest phone was a trio. Right. And and maybe a Blackberry. Right. Is that too soon? To talk about Blackberry. Oh, oh, the late great. I loved my Blackberry. I really did. There's some good Reddit clients out there. For a while, I was using um, the bl Alien Blue. Alien Blue, and now I'm using yes. something called Biscuit. Oh, you know what? That's the new. It's oh, that's the new business. New. Apparently, all the new all the kids are using it. Alien, I still Alien Blue is still the one it's on my. So iPhone. great. Try um, Biscuit. They're they right, they're fans. Right. They watch the show and. Um, all right, Biscuit. They've been tweeting at me. It's nice. Right. Yeah, give it a shot. Yeah. Hey, okay. thank I you. I like biscuits. <laughs> Who doesn't love biscuits? Right? They're delicious. <laughs> thank you. Take care. Have a great evening. Uh, thank you so much, Leo. Right back at you and everyone on the team. Thank you, Take guys. care. Bye. See you. We do triangulation every Wednesday about 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, 20, let's see, 4 p.m. plus 12 is 16 plus 8 is 2400 UTC, midnight, in the middle of the night. But uh, tune in live if you can because you really – the. I need you for my joke writers, but also great questions from the chat room as always. And if you can't, we do make on-demand video of everything we do available on our website, twit.tv. Uh, this show is twit.tv slash T-R-I. And you can download it there or wherever you get your netcasts because we're on all the Stitcher and everything. Thanks for being here. Hey, thanks to our uh, our new editor. I mean, our new uh, technical director, Anthony Nielsen. Is This this isn't your first show, is it, Anthony? No, no, I do This Week in YouTube also. Oh. That show got canceled. <laughs> so maybe we should move you off of this show. I don't know. No. It's great to have you, Anthony. Thank you for doing it. Yeah, no uh, thanks to Karsten Bonney, our producer. Who is... Are we going to do something next week? Yes, he says we are. <laughs> Chris Hardwick. The, the nerdist? On this, on this show? Now I'm nervous. That'll be fun. And then, of course, uh, the week following is Christmas Day, so... I don't know if we're going to do anything. We're going to have a... Uh, we have best of? Okay. You can actually probably still contribute to that. There's lots of great material from the last year of shows at twit.tv slash best of. And then the week following, I think we'll have new shows because I'll be very tired from that all year, all night New Year's thing, but I think we'll have new shows. We have lots of good stuff uh, planned for you. So uh, we'll see you next time on Triangulation. <laughs>